The novel The Bell Jar is a college level book, and I read it when I was in eighth grade in Mrs. Brown's LA Honors class. And the book is very fascinating. It has a twist of events and a storyline that's unique and different and stands out. And it's just a really good book overall because of this. It's unique. It's about a young woman's mental breakdown and how her mental illness affects her in her life. And the main character in the novel, Esther Greenwood, is a, ni is a nice young woman who just finished her junior year in college from which she got a scholarship to. And she just won a contest to go to New York City to write for a fashion magazine. And she narrates the story too. And she views many things different than society. For example, in society, one thing they view women is that they have to lose their virginity when they get married. If they do before that, they just that's not accepted. So Esther goes on a quest basically throughout the book to try and lose her virginity, even though she does not get married, and she eventually does. And also, she has very depressive thoughts, and she's self selfish because she does not realize what her suicide would do to the people around her because she attempted suicide four times in the novel. And she, it shows how hard it is for her because of her mental illness and her slow recovery from it. And there are also many antagonists in the story. These other people that contribute to Esther's mental illness by making it worse. They are Buddy Willard, her mom, Joan Gilling, her friend, and her other boyfriends in the story. Buddy Willard is one of her boyfriends, but he's the worst of them all because he, she said he was a hypocrite. He makes her feel all good about herself because he seems so pure and he makes her feel like she's been with a lot of men when she hasn't, but really, he's a, he's a player basically and he's been with many women before and he doesn't really love her, so she, she, he gives her a bad, bad view towards men and she takes everything he says literally. Also, Esther's mom wants her to learn shorthand and become a secretary, and she views women's roles the same as society does. She wants Esther to be a housewife and just cook and clean and have a normal job like all the other women when Esther doesn't want to. And Joan is her friend, and she's her competition, basically, at the mental hospital, and she makes Esther try and... makes Esther jealous because... She has many privileges that Esther does not in the mental hospital. And her other boyfriend just give her an even worse view towards men. For example, in the story when she went out with Marco, he attacks her and calls her a slut and a whore and bad names. And this affects Esther because he's just mean to her. And he's a woman hater. And the main conflict in the story is between Esther and herself. It is Esther setting unreachable goals for herself. Because she said she has such high expectations for herself because she's a perfectionist. And she can't reach these goals, so she feels like she's a failure. And even when she does reach one goal, she doesn't give her time to celebrate. So eventually she just gets down on herself and really depressed because she feels like she, because she is not reaching her goals. But really she has too high expectations. And the novel uses flashbacks and it goes in chronological order. This helps because... Chronological order is time order, and as time goes on, Esther's mental, Ill mental illness gets worse, so that's important. And the flashbacks help because they help the reader know Esther more, and sh it sh they show some past experiences in her life that contribute to her mental illness. And there are many strengths and weaknesses in this novel, and some strengths are that since Sylvia Plath was a poet, she uses many literary devices such as metaphors and other things that help the story. She uses symbols, imagery, and sensory details to describe, which make it very well written. And they're all the flashbacks can also be a weakness because at some parts there are a bunch of flashbacks and then it's in, it's in present time too, and it makes it hard to follow and confusing. And there are many symbols in the story, but two of them are the bell jar and mirrors. The bell jar is basically a glass jar, a glass jar basically, that is used to show something of scientific curiosity. And this represents madness for Esther, and when she's in it, she feels trapped, like 
Like, she cannot do anything about it, and her mental illness takes over, and it distorts her image of the world. And on page 184, for example, it's at, at 185, it says, as it says, Talks about Miss Guinea and no matter what, if no matter what Mrs. Guinea would give her, she knows she would always be. It says I would be sitting under the same glass ball jar stewing in my own sour air. So she knows she will always, she she thinks she will always be mentally ill and never get better. And also, on, another one is mirrors, and the mirrors basically mean she sees a reflection and she cannot even recognize herself. That's how bad she is, because of her mental illness. When she looks in mirror, she does not know what she's looking at, and this means she cannot recognize her outer self, but also represents that she cannot understand herself at all, her inner self, or the way she thinks, or her emotions, because she is mentally ill. And on page 174, she wants to see a mirror after she tries to commit suicide, and it says, You couldn't tell whether the person in the picture was a man or a woman, because their hair was shaved off and spattered and bristly chicken feather tufts all over their head. One side of the person's face was purple, bulged out in a shapeless way, shading to green along the edges, and then to a sallow yellow. The person's mouth was pale brown with a rose-colored silhouette at the either corner. And basically, she sees a horrific image of herself, and that makes her not understand what she's even looking at. And this just affects her greatly because she does not understand herself at all because of her mental illness. And her mental illness just gets worse throughout the story. The reader can tell from the beginning that she's not really mentally right and then she just keeps getting worse and worse throughout the story until she recovers a bit at the end and she leaves the mental hospital. And the mental health system in the novel, it has its good and bad parts because in the beginning Esther's with Dr. Gordon and she does not like him because he gives her very painful shock treatments because when she is awake. And this makes her condition worse because she does not like him at all. And eventually, though, he, she meets Dr. Nolan, who, who helps her a lot and is on her side and takes a motherly role. According to the text, Esther says she loves Dr. Nolan. This is important because she says she never loved anyone else and she doesn't really show emotions. And there are three different settings in the novel. They are uh, New York City in the beginning, her hometown in Boston, Massachusetts, and the psychiatric ward. In New York City, this is the start of her mental breakdown because she realized she's not special, special anymore and she has to work harder because all the women that she's with that won the contest are just as good as her. And also in Boston, Massachusetts, she tries to kill herself by taking a, a lot of pills because she's depressed and lonely and has nothing to look forward to because she did not make a writing course she applied she applied to and the last setting is in the psychiatric ward and it's organized there and calm because she's with a bunch of mentally ill people with just like her and that's where she recovers and she meets Dr. Nolan and gets a lot of her shock treatments and a, a woman's role in society at that time was that they had certain roles and certain jobs and I still did not want to do that and they, had, they, were, they were looked at to become secretaries and they couldn't have male jobs and didn't have as many privileges. And Plath shows this by making Esther different and showing that she wants a regular job and she could do whatever she wanted. For example, Esther does not want to learn shorthand from her mother and she thinks motherhood is all about cooking and cleaning and she does not want to be a mother. She does not want to be like all other women and just cook and clean and wait for her wife to go home. She wants to do something special. And I think Esther is ready to leave the mental hospital because she get, she made a good comeback and because of Dr. Nolan she shows emotions and she seems better and I think she's more calm and doesn't have as many depressive thoughts and that's why she's able to leave. And overall I thought it was a great novel. It's well written and plaths, literary devices and symbols and metaphors, they just add greatly to the novel. And there are many important themes that the reader learns, like motherhood, societal pressure, sexuality, and more. And there, even though there are some di disturbing or depressing parts in the book, I don't think overall it's a disturbing book, so, which makes it good to read too, for anyone. And, and it's very informative and entertaining because it keeps the reader wanting to know what will happen next in Esther's unpredictable life. 
and it shows on the inside of a mentally ill person's mind, which is why it's such a great book.